My name is Yusuke Nomura, and today I'm going to talk about the application to the J1, J2 Heisenberg model. The application of the neural network wave function to the quantum medibody Hamiltonian has started from the work by Giuseppe and Matthias, and they introduced RBM wave functions. The structure of the RBM looks like this. Here we have the sigma spins, and it corresponds to the uh, physical degrees of freedom. And we also have the H spins, and it corresponds to the auxiliary degrees of freedom. And both sigma spins and H spins are defined as the Ising spins. And the form of the RV wave function is given by this equation. Here A and B are the magnetic field on A sigma and H, and the W is the interaction between them. And with this, the representing the a problem of representing quantum state can be recast as the optimization of RBM parameters using the nonlinear loss function. In this case, it is energy. And the good point of the RBM wave function is that it can represent any wave function with infinite number of hidden units if we take A and W and B to be complex variable. And the application of the neural network wave function has started from the uh, spin systems. And now it is extended to the uh, frustrated spin systems and the itinerant boson systems, and also to the uh, uh, fermion systems. And we also have the application to the fermion, fermion boson coupled systems. And the various benchmark have shown that the machine learning method is powerful. So I think now it is high time to apply the machine learning method to the challenge in physics, which we do not no the exact solutions. So before going to the, before explaining the application to the uh, frustrated spin systems, we start from the application to the Hubbard model. This is because we use the similar uh, wave function. So the basically the RBM is the bosonic wave functions. And uh, to apply to the fermion systems, we need to prepare the fermion wave function. The simplest solution is to combine the boson wave function, the RBM, with the fermion wave function. Here we take the pair product state, and it is called geminal in chemistry. And it is basically the pairing interactions, and uh, it is already a very powerful ansatz. And here we have uh, a variation of parameter Fij. And by optimizing this Fij, the pair product state can help the RBM to efficiently run the ground state. So actually, this combination is a happy marriage between the machine learning and physics. Indeed, by combining these two methods, the accuracy drastically improves. So this is the benchmark to the two-dimensional Hubbard model. We take eight by eight lattice. Here, this is the relative error of the energy compared to the numerically exact QMC result. The blue one is the RBM plus RBM, RBM result, and the green and red is the combination. And the difference between the green and red is whether we impose the symmetry or not. And as we see, uh, the combination substantially improves the accuracy. Also, by using the combination, we can save the number of parameters to obtain the same accuracy. And it is very important when we, when we want to apply to the large system sizes. Now we turn to the uh, frustrated uh, subspin systems, and the reference is given here. So this is the two-dimensional uh, square lattice J1, J2 Heisenberg model. J1 is the nearest neighbor magnetic interactions, and J2 is the next, next nearest neighbor interactions. And both are anti ferromagnetic And actually, in the classical uh, J1, J2 model, there is a phase transition between the nail state and the stripe state at J2 equals 0.5. And in the quantum cases, 
there might appear quantum spin liquid phase around J2.5. It is also very interesting to study the relation between quantum spin liquid and superconductivity. And actually, there is no consensus for the intermediate phases. The candidates are the BBS and the quantum spin liquid. In the BBS, uh, the singlet dimer aligns in lattice and the uh, uh, symmetry of the lattice is broken. So it is a symmetry broken state. On the other hand, in the quantum spin liquid phase, there is no symmetry breaking. Also for the phase boundary, there is no uh, consensus. Uh, um, if we apply a different method and a different analysis, they give different conclusions. So red is the uh, quantum spin liquid phase and uh, blue is the VVS phase. From this, uh, we can see that this J1, J2 Hamiltonian is extremely uh, difficult and challenging system. And it is very exciting to apply the accurate machine learning method uh, for this challenging system. And actually we use the uh, combination of RBM and PP for this model, as in the Hubble model. The difference from the Hubble model is that here we introduce the good serial factor here to prohibit the W occupancy. Then the wave function is mapped onto the spin system. Furthermore, to obtain the excited states, uh, we impose the quantum numbers in the wave functions. So this is the equation to impose the quantum numbers. With this, even when the wave function on the right hand side does not have symmetry, the wave function on the left hand ha side has proper symmetry. We can impose the total momentum and the spin parity. From spin parity, we can distinguish singlet or triplet. Then the ground state is obtained as the singlet and the total momentum zero state. And the excited states are given for the uh, states with other quantum numbers. And actually the Francesco also applied the similar form of wave function. But the main difference is that here we use summation instead of product to impose the symmetry. And this is the benchmark of our RBM plus PP wave function in the J1, J2 Hamiltonian. So this is the ground state energy for J2 equals 0.5 in the frustrated regime at the 10 by 10 lattice. So this is the RBM plus PP result. And this result is comparable to the Rancho's applied result. Uh, from this, we see that RBM plus PP is very accurate. Also by using RBM plus PP, uh, we can uh, obtain very accurate excitation energy. So here, this is the benchmark at six by six lattice, and we compare to the exact diagonalization result. And the agreement is quite good. So from these benchmarks, we see that RBM plus PP can accurately represent not only the ground state, but also excited states. And from this, uh, actually we can use the excitation structure to determine the ground state phases. This is because the excitation structure and the ground state phases have one-to-one -one correspondence. So if the ground state phase, ground state changes, then the excitation structure also changes. So this is the excitation energy at 16 by 16 lattice as a function of J2. So here we see a singlet and a triplet crossing here. And below this J2, uh, the triplet excitation is the lowest excitation. And above this J2, the singlet is the lowest excitation. And this crossing is interpreted as the onset of VVS phase. This is because in the VVS phase, the triplet state become gapped out. And this singlet state 
become degenerate to the ground state as we increase the system size. We also see the singlet and the quintuplet crossing here. And this crossing is interpreted as the disappearance of the anti-paramagnetic long range aura. This is because uh, the uh, quantum rotor power excitation is broken. Then we look at the system size dependence of these two crossings. And here, this is the system size dependence of the singlet triplet crossing and also the singlet uh, quintuplet crossings. And above this J2, uh, we have PVS phase. And below this J2, we have anti-ferromagnetic phase. And by extrapolating to the thermodynamic limit, uh, we have a finite vision of the quantum spin liquid phase. And this is the analysis uh, from the excited state. But we also performed the completely independent analysis using the ground state wave function. So we look at the uh, uh, correlation functions. Then uh, we can obtain the disappearance of uh, anti ferromagnetic phase at uh, J2.49. Uh, and the onset of BVS is around J2.54. So the agreement between these two independent analyses are quite good. And uh, we see numerically the one-to-one -one correspondence between the ground state phase and the excitation, excitation structure. And this is the obtained uh, phase diagram. Uh, between the uh, narrow and striped state, uh, we have the spin liquid and the VVS phase. And in the previous slide, uh, we focus on these two uh, phase boundaries. And actually, the phase boundary between the VVS and stripe is first order. So it is more easy to determine this point. Okay. Then this is the comparison to the uh, previous result. So this is the, our result. And recently, the, uh, Francesco and Federico also performed a similar analysis. And the agreement between ours is very good. And I'm very happy about this result. Finally, uh, we can also study the nature of the quantum spin liquid by looking at the excitations. So here, this is the excitation spectra at J2 equals 0.5 in the quantum spin liquid phase. For comparison, we also show the SQ omega in the Heisenberg model at J2 equals 0. At J2 equals 0, there is symmetry breaking, and we have the number goes mode then 0, 0, and pi, pi become gapless. On the other hand, in the uh, quantum spin liquid phase, not only 0, 0, and pi, pi, but also the pi, 0 become gapless in the triplet sector. Also in the singlet sector, uh, the, at 0, 0, and pi, 0, and pi, pi, the excitation become gapless. And this result is qualitatively consistent with the previous result. From this, we conclude that this uh, spin liquid phase is characterized by the nodal uh, quantum spin liquid. Okay. To summarize, uh, we see that uh, a machine learning method is very powerful. So I think it is high time to apply the machine learning method uh, for the challenging Hamiltonian, which we do not know the exact solutions. And uh, here we show the uh, example of such uh, challenging problem, J1, J2, Heisenberg model. And I think uh, we obtained a very nice result. Okay, uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping right now, so I'm very happy to answer your questions afterwards. Thank you.